Hello, this is Carolyn. Oh, hello, this is Adam Smith calling from NobelPrize.org. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fine. I was told you would call, which is great, because my phone is like been ringing, 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 ringing with, um, I think, Swedish, you know, media people. <laughs> I think the world, um, the world's media will be onto that phone pretty soon. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. How's the morning been so far? I mean, it's insane. You know, I was probably asleep for not even two hours, and all of a sudden, you know, this phone is jarring me awake. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> um, and are you still in relative isolation or has the house been bombarded by the press already? Nope, it's all quiet here. It's dark and quiet and, you know, um, hopefully they don't find me too soon. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah, maybe you should hide because the next few days is okay. going to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it's um, ex exciting company to be in as well. I mean, um, yes. uh, how, do you, how do you feel about... Um, having the prize. Well, I'm sh I'm still, I think, in shock, <laughs> but um, it's really exciting for me to kind of be there in, on the same, you know, list as Barry Sharpless and Morton Meldahl. Um, the two of them are among my, you know, chemistry heroes. Um, you know, I've, Barry Sharpless's work has been, you know, kind of mesmerizing me since I was a graduate student. You know, and I heard him speak at Berkeley back in somewhere in the like late 1980s or early 90s. And, you know, at that end, uh, Morton Meldahl's work I studied while I was in graduate school because he did a lot of work on glycopeptide synthesis um, before, you know, his epic publication of, of quick chemistry. So, um, you know, these are people that I've learned, been learning from for many years, decades even. Uh, and to be among them is just a huge honor for me. <laughs> You're such a serially inventive person, um, you know, um, introducing bioorthogonal chemistry in 2003, and you've started many companies, and you seem to have such energy for um, new directions. What drives you through all this? Well, I, you know, I, I love organic chemistry. I'm fascinated by biology. Um, you know, I like, like all of us, you know, I've had family members and close friends who suffered from ailments that um, were so untreatable, you know. And so, you know, it was always my hope that um, as a scientist, you know, I could make some contributions that might benefit human health, either in the near term or the long term, or not even necessarily in my lifetime. But, you know, that was, that was always my goal. Um, and I like teaching and, you know, I like working with um, people who share my passion and are who I can, you know, help with the wisdom of my age, I guess. <laughs> and what about chemistry? It gets a bad press sometimes. It ought not to. I mean, you know, chemistry is, is the central science, as we call it. And, um, you know, it's such an exciting area of science for people who want to have an impact in biology and medicine and materials and climate and sustainability, right? It, chemistry is so central to all of it. Um. Hmm. Really, it's, it, you know, when, when the world is in trouble, chemistry comes to the rescue, right? And COVID-19 is a great example of that. Um, so I think, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, I can, maybe I can contribute to, uh, you know, making our public image more exciting and positive, you know. It's a, lo it's a wonderful image of uh, chemistry, the superhero yeah. coming to the rescue. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, of course people will focus on the fact that you're only the eighth woman to have been awarded the chemistry prize. How does that um, sort of sit with you? Well, it's, you know, that definitely adds a layer of gravity, I think, to the, to the occasion. Um, you know, of course, I have, you know, I've been in environments where a woman wins a prize and she's the first woman to win a prize, so there's very few. And, and I can't help but think about um, all the women who came before me who did spectacularly important work, every bit as important as anything I've done, um, but didn't have the opportunity to be recognized. So I think it's, you know, it's, I, I love that the numbers tick up. <laughs> I wish they ticked up um, more, more broadly. I think the fact that they are ticking up is, is very positive. Um, and it's, you know, and I know some of the other women who've been recognized with Nobel Prizes. And again, to sort of be among 
company like that is just incredibly humbling. Hmm. Um, and I'm sure there'll be many more in the future. You know, I mean, there's so many amazing women scientists, um, and I think we'll see them coming up more and more. But progress is a bit slow. Um, in, I mean, you yourself have found yourself, as you already mentioned, in all male environments. Have you any advice for those who um, want to, for want of a better phrase, break through? Well, I'm I'm very um, optimistic about how you know science and the culture of science is trending. Um, hold on, someone has just come to my front door. <laughs> someone is ringing the doorbell. <laughs> um, and uh, so, so I think, you know, it, it, things are looking so much better, and there's so many visible women now. I, I think there's just every reason to be optimistic. Hi. Okay. Are you the press people? Yeah. Come on in. Hi. So I'm on the phone with one of the gentlemen from the Nobel Foundation. Okay. Come on in. My place is your place. Make yourself comfortable. Sorry, I've got the Stanford Press here now. I'm sure. And I think I was lucky to catch you before, um, before they <laughs> arrived. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, the phone is ringing off the hook, and just help yourself to whatever. Grab a soda from the fridge if you're thirsty. This is the middle of the night for you too, so I understand. Okay. So, Adam, is there anything? Do I have action items here? Because I'm probably not going to remember anything you say. So, uh-huh. no, um, it's, you can relax and just enjoy the the, the show that's going to unfold in front of you. <laughs> I know my emails are the box is already filled up, so. But it's fun, actually, listening um, to the press people arrive. It's quite nice to get an insight into what happens um, yeah. in the middle yeah, of the night in yeah. California. Um, in, enjoy your amazing day to unfold. Thank you so much. All right. Nice to Hopefully talk to you. I'll talk Thank to you, you soon. Bye okay. now. Bye. If you enjoyed this moment, we have another special episode you won't want to miss on Nobel Prize origin stories. We present clips of laureates recalling formative moments and Adam explores the unexpected factors that can shape the lives and careers of these great minds. Find it on Acast or wherever you listen to podcasts.